Easy E, how are we? Shawnee, I'm a model now. I fucking told you. Yeah, I told you. Do you know what, Eric? I, I actually <laughs> did nothing this past week. It was all you, all Instagram. I look online, all of a sudden you're you're advertising. I was going to say you're advertising yourself out there. That's not exactly what I was. But yeah, back to where yeah. <laughs> What is going on? I'm, like, you just, I'm gone for one week away from the Instagram and all of a sudden you're modeling yourself. What is going on, sir? I think everyone will gladly say that our Instagram was the best it's ever been this week. <laughs> 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 you know there was t-shirts there was pictures there was it was brilliant um but no it was uh it was good we it's time i suppose everyone has had a week there's some who are doing new york probably as we are recording right now or getting ready to start and we are starting to shift our focus to barcelona and that is what we're looking at we we have our barcelona marathon t-shirt we've advertised it this week i so I dragged it around on my holidays and, and made people take photographs in the beautiful T-shirt in the most iconic places. Um, yeah, hang on a second. I, I don't get that. Like This was all your marketing plan. And my end was here, Sean. There's a couple of T-shirts. Do me a favor. Run around Dublin and suffer for four hours. And then you're in like Jordan. You're, you're next to pyramids. You're you're soaking in the sun. You know, you have a tan on you in like November. And, and, and I, I'm dying. I'm in the hurt locker for like four hours in this thing. I'm like, I'm not too sure I'm advertising this well. And I get one picture, one little picture of it. And there's like 17 of you on the Instagram. <laughs> You were like the re- like my my sweatshop essentially. Uh, <laughs> I, needed, uh, I needed I needed someone to sweat in the t shirt. I've done tank now. I have sweated and I've tried it out here in the in the desert and and that's why we 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 introduced the two t shirts. One one for running in, uh, and one for we say the party t shirt. It's more to keep you cool afterwards and and also that you can just relax and lounge in. And it's uh it's that uh, look. I've searched. I have done a lot of races out here, ten k's, five k's, and they're big on t-shirts and medals, and which is great for me. I'm an addict. I'm like a magpie when it comes to it. But yeah, and it took me a while to find the suppliers and hunt them down. But we we got them in the end, and and I think it's an excellent t-shirt. But yeah, I have to say, as fun as it was doing the Instagram, and I was probably I don't know can people tell the difference when I take over with the reels and the memes and the stories, but it was fun and. I'm humbled. I have to say with the amount of people when that post went up, it, it's it's more like an add on. We, we're ordering T-shirts for, for the marathon and, and that's what it is. Um, and it was the case of, do you reckon people would like one who listen or or like I didn't really know. It was more of a shot to nothing. I just wanted to introduce it to the marathon group and those who have signed up with us. And then it was a case of, yeah, if you want one, I'm ordering on the, the 10th of November. So uh, you can get in on it by then and, and we'll figure it out. I am absolutely overwhelmed by the number of people mm. who reached out and wanted to support us. It wasn't even about the T-shirt. It was to thank us for every Monday and and the amount of messages we got from people to say, I ran my first marathon because of you guys. Uh, you were with me every week in my marathon block. We love the guests, the variety you guys give us. And I have to say, yeah, I kind of forget. When we sit here with a microphone and a laptop and we look at each other, we don't see that impact. We don't see that. But never, it really does, like, never ceases to amaze me that, that so many people are listening. So many people are, are getting something from this podcast. Mm. There's so many people from Dublin said, guys, those last couple of kilometers in Dublin, I just remembered everything you guys had said, all the tips I got from the podcast. It's scary. And and I suppose it's, it's absolutely amazing to, um, it's amazing that people didn't even want the t-shirt they just wanted to support us too to keep going into the new year and it's amazing so instead of listing you all i just want to thank you all anyone who commented reached out to me directly messaged us uh, for a t-shirt and we will have them to you in january is is the is the goal for us and and we can't thank you enough and it's it's absolutely amazing it's a great feeling and a very humbling feeling and we are very very grateful and there's definitely a few listeners out there that, that help drag me across the finish line in Dublin as well. But um, Eric, how does, how does someone get one of these t-shirts? 
So if you are looking for these T-shirts, you can go onto our Instagram and or Facebook. If you either directly message us, I will send you all the details. You fill out a, a Google form. We're going very old school to keep costs down. Uh, fill out a Google <laughs> form. I'll send you a payment link that can be done by card or by Revolut. You can send me the money and in January, you will get your T-shirt posted out. We are posting to the Republic of Ireland. Only as all we factored in for the postage for the T-shirt. They are 30 euros per person or per t-shirt and yeah you can just get in touch with us and you can also email us at agr marathon trip at gmail.com so any given run day agr marathon trip at gmail.com and that will help me get a t-shirt to you in january but again even if you don't want a t-shirt we are so grateful for you listening we are so grateful for all your support it's 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 absolutely amazing we're we're amazed then in the week of the marathon, almost 6,000 people downloaded our podcast. We appreciate every single one of you and, and we don't we don't take any of it for granted. So if you want a T-shirt, you have until don't do it on the 10th of November because there's so much happening. <laughs> the order is going in on the 10th. So in the, if you listen to this podcast, if you don't get on to me by Wednesday, fuck off. <laughs> no, uh, um, you're doing so well in the marketing and then you just <laughs> yeah. it's the only give a run they podcast the honesty comes out in the end but it's uh yeah no it's um uh, we have until the 10th of november so if you do want one please get in touch with us people are asking about sizes they're a unisex fit if you're finishing a marathon you're finishing a race it is the size that you would give to the race director to say i am a medium t-shirt please and that's the best way we can describe it to people sean is wearing a medium um five for four sean are you <laughs> so five foot ten eleven maybe if he wears his jordans um and then <laughs> i'm wearing a large uh six foot four and it's a perfect fit for me so they they're the guides on the male sizes and uh, and ladies unfortunately as as best you can guess in the unisex sizes for yourselves uh, but it's it is a great it's a great feeling it's it's weird it's weird to see our name on a t-shirt and and people people want it so as well sean those who have signed up for our marriage and those who haven't hard luck better luck next year but those who have, you can start to expect emails coming out. Training plans are going to start coming out. We're going to have our first group training meeting coming up soon as well. So keep an eye on your emails. There will possibly be a dreaded another WhatsApp group, but it's more of a broadcast group. It's more to let you know when things are coming up and, and important things over the trip, just so the communication is a little bit more efficient. So those of you who are partaking, Get your arse and gear. It's time. The The training plans are coming. You'll be getting a lot more notification over the next couple of days, including getting your marathon ticket will be the next step. So do keep an eye out for the information. I will be in touch over the next week. Don't threaten our listeners like that. <laughs> be afraid. <laughs> uh, moving swiftly on. <laughs> Since the double marathon, people have different goals. You know, we've seen all the different posts on it. We talked about it in, in David McCarthy's episode. What happens now? Uh, and for some people like us, it's you know, back to five and ten Ks building towards the Barcelona marathon. Some people, like our next guest, has decided to go to complete opposite way and do an ultra 300 challenge. Um, that, that he's starting as you're listening to this podcast. If you're listening to it in the week it comes out, he's probably running right now somewhere in Kilkenny, Carlo, Kildare, Wexford, Waterford, or Tipperary. Eric, what's going on this week's episode of the podcast? This week is again, everyone's kind of licking their wounds and, and picking themselves back up. And, and David is going to run 300 kilometers. He's doing six ultra marathons in six days for, for charity. It's all in memory of his dad. And this story is, is fantastic. And I suppose people who start running, and I had a conversation with someone yesterday who were doing the first 5K and they were like, I hate running. I hate it. Everyone hates it at the start. And I suppose this is a testament of, of what running can do for you and, and how far you can go if, if you just apply yourself and you're consistent with it. And above all else, it's just nice, I suppose, to take a deep breath, watch someone else do a hell of a lot of work. Those who have done 42 kilometers, you might have a better appreciation for for what this man is about to undertake over six days. And and it's a great story and, and a good background and for a good cause and a really, really good episode. And with that said, let's get into this week's episode of the Any Given Monday podcast. Let's go. Our next guest on the Any Given Monday podcast is doing an ultra 300 challenge in memory of his dad and involves running six ultra marathons over six counties on six consecutive days 
aiming to raise €60,000 for the Dylan Quirk Foundation, Alzheimer's Society of Ireland, and Young Ireland GA in Kilkenny. I'm tired after that, David. I don't know how you're going on this week. David Carter, welcome to this week's episode of the Any Given Monday podcast. How are you getting on? Great, uh, lads. Thanks for having me on. Pleasure. David, you couldn't pay me six grand to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, by the end of this, you never know. You might be converted. You might be part of the cult, lads. So you don't know. So a lot of people do a lot for charity. We've seen with the Dublin Marathon, people fundraise for charity. You know, people are fundraising for a lot of things. Six ultras, six days, six counties. That is a, a substantial length to go to for charity. Yeah. What brought this on? Yeah, I, I guess the ultimate why is probably around is around my dad, Charlie. So he, he passed away in February 2010. Young age, 60, died of a heart attack. So it was obviously very sudden, very sudden for us. And I guess felt like he was probably taking a little bit in the in his prime. And, you know, I always talk to people around, you know, loss and grief. And, you know, listen, I don't, you know, lots of people have lots of other bigger things to deal with, but everyone deals with kind of grief in their own way. And I guess probably running was one of the things that I kind of fell into after that and probably was one of the things that I guess helped me deal with it those long runs where you just have time to time to think to yourself and probably the times that I felt closest to that in a strange way so whether that's hallucinating when you're out in a long run I don't know and I was mad into sports before this but I'd never ran so kind of my Paris marathon was actually the first one I did I think that was in 2011 naively yeah, so you know, bad training, all of the all of the rookie mistakes that you might do for a marathon. But listen, we got around and something like four fifteen, and I guess that was the bug really from from there. And yeah, I guess over time, I probably wanted to to do something in memory of Dad. So kind of back five years ago, when Dad would have been seventy, I did a marathon and an ultra marathon in the space of a week. And I guess, yeah, it's coming up. Dad would be 75 now on the 9th of November. And yeah, I was running around at home probably six, seven months ago and was kind of thinking, well, what what could I do and go big, kind of go big or go home? And that's kind of where the, the Ultra 300 challenge. And I guess part of it also was, I guess, a little bit cathartic in a way, I guess, part letting go. So the run will start and finish where Dad's buried it's at the entrance to the local GAA club it's at the primary school where obviously you grow up so I guess there's a bit of everything kind of linked into to that and we're going to then go around kind of six counties a little bit in a loop I suppose and and yeah in in the in the midst of that then hopefully raise some some funds for some really worthy organizations so so yeah that's kind of the the, the craziness of it six ultra martins i don't know i guess kevin kevin sinfield if anyone's listening i guess you might have seen what he's done for for rob burrows so probably looked at things like what he's done people like shane finn down in Kerry, con o'keefe you know all, all these guys who are you know i guess a lot of the runners out there probably follow the madness and i don't know there's probably something in there that just sparks and I've always wanted to do something like the Marathon de Sable or maybe UTMB. My wife would probably kill me. So she's very patient. And uh, yeah. I think this was probably as far as I could could take it. At least I'm close to home. If, if I do keel over, it makes life much easier for her. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you touch on it. Everyone we say who's running a marathon or who's running is either running from something or for something. Do you find that in, in your grief of losing your dad, that running became part of that management? I know you alluded to it, but what did it actually mean yeah. for you in terms of headspace? Yeah, it definitely became part of the it definitely became part of the management because it's that I guess it's that solitary, solitary time. You know, nothing beats getting out there. Honestly, nothing beats when you come back after a run, how you feel. And, you know, there's obviously other ways that you can deal with it which you know sometimes aren't massively massively positive and you know there are times when you know alcohol is probably a an easy one 
to to also slip into and so it's really running I guess allowed me to find a little bit of that balance and you know honestly nothing nothing better even if it's raining outside when you come back after it just the endorphins running through you it's uh it's amazing so I guess yeah that was kind of my way to 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 manage to manage it and yeah think about that along the way and you know uh, I guess find find a balance in in life as well and why 300 what was the what was the bit that made you say 300 that's that's the magic number you know what what was the why not two you know two is very impressive why not six <laughs> why why a half yeah. as impressive as six? I guess the, the <laughs> six 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 was almost a bit like uh, one of my mates who actually helped me out on the branding and he was uh would you not call it the devil's marathon and I was like well no I probably don't want to have those connotations but <laughs> but there was an element was of that. you know the the kind of six and then the the dad was 60 when he passed away and and so I guess that's kind of where the six came out of and I guess part of it is then six ultras obviously feels bigger too so when you're you know there's obviously lots of people trying to raise money out there for different causes and I guess you're trying to make it feel as big as possible in terms of what you know someone might be putting into it so that then people are hopefully willing to to give some some money towards great causes and kind of recognizing what you know obviously this is something that I just I came up with myself so it's not anything that I'm tied into in terms of a broader broader piece it's yeah I dreamt up if you want to call it that or nightmared it up myself so <laughs> so yeah it just felt like a a good round number a good big hairy goal to go after and yeah, r- rightly or wrongly, I'll tell you next Saturday whether that was the right thing to do. But, but that's what I've that's what I've gone for. Uh, a challenge that was scary, just that that little bit. When you did five years ago for for uh, what would have been your dad's seventieth, and the goal then was the marathon uh, and the ultra marathon that week. Um, did that feel as big of a challenge as this week's feels? And did you feel like after the seventieth that you need to do something? bigger to like talk me through that thought process of what you're feeling back then to now yeah I guess I was probably earlier in in my my running then a little bit I guess and so kind of part of that was almost a bit of testing and learning I had done an ultra previous year so it was the eco trail Madrid that I did I did the Lausanne marathon on a on a Sunday and then the following Saturday I did an 80 kilometer ultra so I really wanted to that was nine and a half hours on my feet wow. which is uh yeah it's and that was just an amazing I, I still remember so much of that race and you know describing an ultra to people is it, it's kind of it's a strange phenomenon you know the marathon is, a, is an amazing thing that people do an amazing thing anything that people do in relation to running but the ultra just takes you to places that mm. and your mind, your body obviously goes to places, but more importantly, your mind goes to places that you've, I don't think you've ever gone to. And it's you almost go through, a, I won't say a lifetime in that nine and a half hour block, but it's it's funny the emotions that kind of trigger trigger through you, you know, good and good and bad. There's times when you just want to, this isn't this isn't worth it. And then there's other times when there's, you know, the ultra piece is probably a little bit of a, a cult as well. and People are of a similar ilk, I guess. So, you know, the support that you get along the course is amazing. So, so yeah, I, 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 as with anything, you know, when someone crosses a marathon, I'm sure when people cross in Dublin and they're like probably 3Ks before that, they're thinking, why did they do this? An hour later, when they're in the pub, they're thinking about which one will I sign up for next? Like, that's, it, it is a crazy yeah. thing. That, it's just a drug that, and a good drug, I think, in terms of, you know how people react to it so yeah I guess coming out of that I always had a view that I probably would do something if you want to say bigger but definitely something like that again mm-hmm. COVID probably took over then unfortunately <laughs> after that was November I think November 19 that was and then obviously 2020 the world kind of caved in and the last few years have just been a little bit chaotic I was living in Switzerland we have moved back home since then and so yeah there's just been a lot going on but I guess I've felt the most settled I have in the last 
12 months and I was actually just looking at the Strava yesterday. I'm at nineteen hundred and ninety nine point three kilometers in the <laughs> last 12 months. So I've covered decent ground. I'm not, by the way, I'm a very average runner. I'm a 324 marathon, so I'm not. I'm I'm not anything different to anyone out there, to be honest. So you that know, puts you above me in Eric straight away at a three twenty four marathon. So you're, you're, <laughs> I, I, used to li- I used to like your work, David, but not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I still have that sub three. I'm forty four now, but I still feel like I came to running a little bit later. So I do feel like I've got another couple of years, probably three years, maybe of improvement. I haven't done a marathon honestly since twenty nineteen, since that one, that three twenty four. So I. Maybe after this, if you're talking about what might be next, probably sub three, I'd still like to to crack it. But, you know, chapeau to anyone who is, you know, there's a guy running with me on, on day three next week. And he finished 53rd on Sunday uh, in the wow. marathon. His first marathon, by the way. And he did two hours, 33 minutes. I mean, just absolutely phenomenal what people are able to to do and what their bodies are able to to let them do so that's a real I'll, I'll probably have to tie tie oh, one of his legs together and, <laughs> <laughs> and, but, but yeah so so yeah that's probably what ultimately might be might be next but let's uh, get through the next six days and then go from there you've covered almost 2000 kilometers in the last 12 months obviously switzerland obviously gave you a, a base of maybe some mountain running obviously it's a great outdoors lifestyle and depending on where you're living the winter time all adds an element to it you have a fantastic foundation obviously in in running what does training for six ultras in six days look like what how yeah. how do you manage your time what do you eat What's your mileage? Like, I have so yeah. many questions about what's involved to get you ready for this fantastic, yeah. fantastic event. Yeah, I guess there was probably three things for me that, uh, and I, you know, really kicked this off six months ago was when I really ramped up the, the proper training for it. Uh, and I guess one was obviously the, the miles and the legs. That's really base number one. And, and I'll talk about that in a second. Second piece was strength and conditioning, which, to be honest, I was probably a little bit, I won't say lazy, but I'm probably one of those runners. I just prefer to try on the runners and go out and run. And I probably have you neglected and you see all of the stuff out there to tell you and it's the right thing. But the dedication to actually go and do it. But honestly, I knew I would, you know, you you would get so many injuries through this if you didn't build up the resilience. So S&C was really important for me. And then the the nutrition side of it was was really key and and kind of getting some professional input on that. So 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 I guess if I take the running piece first, so I actually went with the runner app, and they've got you know they've got their programs. So they had kind of a sixteen week ultra one, and then they had a multi stage one. So I kind of split it into to two. And again, not dissimilar, I would say, to, you know, how people might train for a marathon, the classic, you know, probably to a speed and, and maybe a hill session during the week. And then the others are, are really just long runs, obviously, versus marathon training, you're doing longer long runs, of course. So, you know, at the peak of it, I would have done a, a 50K and a 30K back to back a few times so just to kind of be on your legs for for that length of time obviously for marathon you're typically doing whatever 32 34k is your kind of longest long run so that was probably the biggest difference and then getting up to kind of a peak of 100k a week that's you know but kind of hovering up around that 75 80k as we got to the real mix of it so so that really was again nothing I would say nothing groundbreaking or really different in that. I guess time on your feet ultimately is is the biggest the biggest difference versus maybe how someone would train for a for a marathon. Have you got sore aching muscles? Then you need to ask for the Ultra Pure Laboratories muscle recovery range in your local pharmacy or health store. Trusted by athletes and tried and tested by ourselves, this great value and guarantee Irish range includes Epsom salt gels with Arnica, perfect if you have no time or access to a bath. The wintergreen heat rub cream, ideal for targeted heat support. 
You just need to be careful where you put it, Sean. Not for the faint heart. <laughs> and a favorite of ours, the magnesium oil spray. Brilliant for restless legs and muscle cramps. Ice cold menthol gel with arnica. Excellent for cooling and soothing tired feet and muscles. And as we're talking to marathon runners and athletes, the relaxing essential oil muscle spray with nine essential oils plus arnica. A gem of a product. And most importantly, vegan too. For bumps and bruises, ask for Ultra Pure Arnica Cream. And last but not least, their magnesium-rich Epsom salts. We go through both of these. You just can't be an ultra-pure Epsom salts bat. And it's the first wash you've had in years, Sean. Bat or shower. So ultra-pure, thanks so much for helping us out with that one. Ultra-pure Laboratories is an Irish-owned and award-winning family business. Based in County Mayo, shop the ultra-pure muscle recovery range in-store or online from pharmacies and health stores. Find out more at ultrapurelabs.ie. And by listening to this advert, you have helped this podcast and you are supporting Irish businesses. So let's get back to this week's episode of the Any Given Run Day podcast. I suppose you're doing back, because you're doing consecutive days as well, that 50k leading into the 30k the next day, having to do the 30k more so on tire legs rather than if you're doing a marathon, you might do 32, 34 like you might do that after having two days break leading up to it. So you, you feel somewhat okay for how it was running on, on the 30K day after doing 50K. So how did the body feel and, and, and adapt to that over the weeks? Yeah, I, I guess I've got gotten pretty good on, so purchased in a, a nice bat, the recovery bat. So was straight into that. So for pretty much finished the run straight into, straight into that for got up to 10 minutes. So that's kind of my, my target honestly if i had one piece of advice that alone is, yeah that's a return on investment that i can guarantee you will pay back in bucket loads and not super expensive to be honest i think it was 100 quid for the for the ice bath and it's just handy because it's it's just circular it's there and you you can fill it pretty easily so that was amazing and then i did buy the, the pulsio the compression boots which again are maybe part psychological, but I, uh, really, they were really helpful too. So I kind of went, it, got into my routine as it related to that. And to be honest, after running 50K, I woke up the next day and went down the stairs and you know, to where you kind of feel like you might walk backwards, but it's so mm. yeah. it was actually fine. Okay. Your legs are not like, yeah, let's go, let's go again. Like no bother. But, but it was, you know, relatively, it's, it's mad how the body just, the body just adapts, I think. But the recovery for me is, I think that's the most important element and probably the biggest. Well, for anyone starting off running a foam roller, I, I tell everyone, just please, just buy a foam roller. Mm. Buy a decent pair of runners, get tested, do your gait analysis and, and have a decent pair of runners and don't buy, I'm, I'm not uh, an anti Nike, but I, I would just say to people, just be be conscious of what you're purchasing. Don't fall for marketing. I'm running, actually running the Hokas at the moment. So the Hoka Rahis, which I've been a, an Asics Keanu man all the way up because I do a bit of overpronating. But honestly, the, the Hokas have been amazing. And, you know, I've even spoken to, you know, foot specialists as well. And they are very much... Hooker's Brooks. You now again, I'm not sponsored by anyone. I'm just telling you what I've been what I've been told. And but so, Hoka so yeah. or Brooks, if you're listening, give us a million euros or come on. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and get David but, six grand pronto. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so I guess that was the running part of it, and then the nutrition. So so we spoke with uh, Evan Lynch. He's an endurance guy. He is a fantastically bright young man and not again nothing groundbreaking but just straightforward simple stuff i think he had done stuff with shane finn before and, and con o'keefe and stuff and did a sweat test basically so weigh yourself before and, and after a run and then he was able to to calculate kind of what i'd need every hour so essentially that's where i got to 100 and basically 120 grams every hour is what i'll consume next week which will be the kind of precision I'm using, the precision gel. I played around with all the gels, but I, I landed on basically the precision fuel one, which is a 90 gram one. So it's very easy. It just opens up 
you could argue a bit on the expensive side, but honestly, worth it. Very easy on the stomach. So that and a, a LucasAid Sport, good old fashioned LucasAid Sport, a 500 mil every hour. So that's the 120 grams. And then he's kind of developed, and I have it on my my Instagram page. Yeah. Up to 300 challenges, basically 6,100 calories is what he's calculated that I need to consume every day. Again, you'll see on that there's nothing. There's nothing groundbreaking in it. It's just normal protein, carbs. Just just get it into you as much as you can. Um, I saw the post. It doesn't look like six thousand one hundred. It just it, yeah. yeah. I thought it'd be. Like I saw the the thing at the top is like another six added to this challenge. But I was like, it doesn't look like it's like a bagel and jam is like your snack after your your Lucas Hay stuff journey. I was like. How about the calories beside him? Like, are you sure this definitely now Ev, we had in the podcast? He's phenomenal. So I'm not I'm not doubting the guy, but I'm like, <laughs> is this definitely a, a yeah. six thousand? This seems very, I suppose, yeah. a, a attainable that you're gonna do over six days is have six thousand each day. Like it's yeah, and listen, I'm I'm sixty-five kilos now. I've lost a couple. Uh I, I, I don't need I don't need to lose kegs, to be honest. So I'm I'm also trying to make sure I don't go into a complete break mm. by the end of the week so yeah so he was he was super helpful and and the fact that he's he's done it with people who have done this type of thing before like he just it the level of confidence and i actually got around halfway through to be honest it was only really around i think it was end of july august that i spoke with him and my long runs i can tell you that it just they changed the incremental improvement it's probably 40 percent, i would say Wow, I was under fueling to an extent that was just, just again naive, foolish. Like I would come in on the back of a forty k run and kilometer thirty eight, you'd be you you're bouncing, you're actually bouncing. It's crazy. I mean, it's simple math, right? You know, yeah, fuel in, fuel, fuel out, fuel in. So he, he's been an amazing help on 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 that side. And then the SNC is a local place here in, next door to me in, in Bagnellstown, Patrick Fitness Centre, and and basically it's a, a guy from from home, family friend JP Tracy, and and another guy from our local club, Jason Brennan, and those guys are just geniuses. Um, you know, JP is is also training the likes of Rachel Blackmore and stuff, and uh, just gets it, you know, but but incredibly knowledgeable variety you know so not doing the same thing and, and everything tailored to basically fire glutes get your strength get your core just tightening up kind of tightening up everything so you know your running efficiency is is super strong so that twice a week basically and and obviously bits in between so there for me have been the three kind of real bases of of how I've kind of prepared and, and trained. When you were doing that training, and I'm assuming at 6 a.m. starts because everything's a six on, on, on this thing here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> were you were you training on your off-running days or were you managing to do both after strength training how session? How, how did the yeah, how did you balance doing, doing and strength? I was both. typically doing both. Like, okay, if there's maybe a heavier session that JP might be planning, I, I might just leave it at that for the day. But typically they were more around a lot of plyometrics, you know, I wasn't lifting, I wasn't lifting weights, I wasn't doing anything crazy. It was more, you know, you're, you're young guys, but I'm 44 and I, and I think, you know, as the body gets older, you know, the flexibility, the mobility piece, and that's, you know, opening out your hips, all those little things. So it wouldn't have been that I was, you know, really testing testing the body and and empty and it wasn't like a hit session i was i was doing with him so so no i was typically able to probably be an easy run but i'd be able to do a decent run after that um so so that was that was really important looking to recover faster yep. train harder yep. and perform better and then what Perform Nutrition is one of Ireland's leading sports nutrition brands with a number of great tasting protein powders, a range of vitamins, as well as other supplements such as creatine. All products are made in the GMP facility in the West of Ireland, and they have a range of batch tested and informed sports certified products. Perform is trusted by a number of Olympians, 
High Rocks champion such as Sean Noble. He was in the podcast. Yeah, right, he was. And also CrossFit Games athletes such as Emma McQuaid and many more. Performance goal is to offer the highest quality, best taste in nutrition products for competitive prices. And now you can get an extra 25% off all products with the code AGR on their website, performnutrition.com. 25%? I'm typing it in now. And don't forget, we are supporting Irish companies. You are supporting this podcast by listening to this advert. So support Irish, get behind your podcast and get behind your local businesses. And until then, let's get back to the podcast. What kind of support does it take to do this? Or what is your plan for for your each rest stop, I suppose, or your or your check marks along the way? So as we start to look at the event, what targets are you setting yourself? Have you driven? Have you cycled? Have you checked out the course? Do you know it by like the back of your hand now? Yeah, yeah. I know I know I just have either either driven or driven or ran each each part. To be honest, I'm taking it as, you know, 30, 10 Ks. That's kind of how I'm breaking it down and and so (laughs) you know that's psychologically probably that's that's a bit a bit of that so you know i'll I'll obviously have my my gel and my lucas aid and be a cyclist either a cyclist or runners or runners with me so you know i'll I'll carry the pouch and someone will have um lucas aid so i'll have that for the hour and then probably try to basically have a check-in on each each hour just a, a quick one. We'll take a break at 25k. Probably do a protein shake and I'm saying, I mean anything kind of just relatively basic, a bit of, a bit of simple fuel that will be easy to to get down. And then yeah, just just kind of continue continue through. So we have our markers and we have access to water at the end, so we can have the ice bath ready and get straight into that. And then yeah, back. Back, back home and rest and ready to go ready to go again for the for the next day I, I saw someone which is literally just point a and you're just running through the county to point b at the end to get picked yeah. up it was it was something i thinking jesus i've got it like 30 10 k's i can't be doing loops on myself or going down and back yeah. end was it just new things to see for 50k or how did you plan the route? That, I, I guess i guess sean the biggest piece was probably like the running on the roads is you know, I, I wanted to avoid that probably as much as I could. I'm very lucky here. We live at the foot of Mount Leinster in Carlo, and the River Barrow is is on our is on my doorstep. So a lot of my running has been done along that. Which honestly, I would encourage anyone. It's the best therapy session you'll ever get. Run along that. The quietness, the peacefulness, the beauty, just amazing. So I wanted to incorporate that. So we did. So we've got, you know, day one, we'll, we'll, okay, a little bit start on the roads and then onto the, onto the river barrow and the barrow way. Basically day two, same, we'll head up towards essentially Monast Revan from, from Baglandstown. So again, along the river barrow, we'll do the Waterford Greenway. So again, all safe, starting Waterford and finishing in Dungarvan. The Tip Blue Way is day five. So most of it is, you know, and, and mm because the river relatively flat as well so there was there was method in my in my <laughs> madness um so i did drive the wexford route for any one of our wexford listeners they'll know wexford roads are are interesting um so that's probably <laughs> the most testing route but we'll start pretty much start at the top of mount leinster which will be a lovely a lovely way to yeah. kind of start to run and, and down then into wexford but then it's a bit it's a bit undulating after that so we'll have to negotiate I couldn't avoid hills completely and we tried to obviously stay on relative back roads as well mm-hmm. so that we're not we're not in any major major danger and you know it could be mostly just myself with a couple of people running alongside probably the last day hopefully will be the day we'll have a few more with us particularly in the in the last stretch as we come into uh to to go on my home uh home village so so yeah so that's the six counties were kind of the, obviously the neighbouring counties to where I am, so that's why we chose those. And and then it was really about choosing routes that were flat and safe it was probably the main the main goal. But when you when you do put them in on Strava, you're like Jesus, you're going from 
Badlands Town to Carlo to Athai to just outside Monaster Evan, you're like driving that is enough, but thinking about running is different, uh, a different ball game. And are you staying in them locations each night or no, we're pretty night? much Eric, we're pretty much 30, 40 minutes away anyway. Yeah. So, you know, between the points. Now nah, I think sleeping in my own bed and um Smart. probably the best way, get back home and have your food that that you need and back with the family as well. And yeah, so no, we'll we'll travel back home. We've got the support van coming along, coming along with us. So we've got a few different folks helping to to drive as well alongside and just just keep an eye. I don't want to be driving in front or behind me, but more just to kind of go to the next stop and and I'll probably a leader at then have cyclists, cyclists and runners kind of with me for all of the all of the routes. Anyone interested in those route, David does have a website, um, ultra300challenge.com, and you do see near the bottom of it, you do have all six routes are up there in Strava. So yeah. you, you're able to get, get more of an idea of, of those routes. Um, I saw your T-shirts on your Instagram as well. You're definitely stand out. They look class, but they are yeah, pretty much... Yeah, yeah. I, I could see your thing of the back wrecks for the roads there with those T-shirts. Absolutely. Make sure you're sitting there in the corner. Absolutely. We, yeah, we we'll definitely, we'll definitely stand out. So yeah, that's the, the guys at Body Light Gear. In Carlo, they do a lot of high vis and running stuff. Really, really great quality. So Martin and the guys have been brilliant there. And then Eric is a, a good friend of mine who I who I've grown up with in Cork and Horticulture. So they've kindly sponsored. And they're the little things, honestly. That you know, Dad always said, never forget where you came from. You know, I posted this morning. There was a I found an article actually that was after his after his passing in the Kilkenny People, and it. You know, for obviously not everyone knows who my dad was, but it's uh probably captures it captures him pretty well. But the community spirit, helping neighbors, helping people, and to be honest, the support I've got, people reach out to you, just yeah, just amazing. It's 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 fairly humbling, but also just shows you friendship that's there, and and then just people in general Irish people just want to help to be honest it's uh it's a great trait that we have and I guess uh, you'll see in that article you know honesty was one of dad's big values and and helping others so you know it's nice that we're able to in his memory give back to you know the the two charities in terms of Dylan Quirk and and Alzheimer Society and then obviously our local GA club, which you know is is front and center for us, is what you grow up doing from the age of two or three, especially in Kilkenny, you've got a hurl in your hand. So, so yeah, it's nice to be able to to give back to to those uh, three at the same time. Absolutely brilliant, David. How can people get a uh, sponsor? What's the best way to? Is it just the link on the website? We'll have a yeah, so notes as well, but. Yeah, under 300 challengecom and you you'll see the donation link there, or you can you know go on to at Ultra 300 Challenge on Instagram, whereas that's probably where I'll be posting most of my most of my stuff next week. So so yeah, you you'll be able to to find the donation links there. If anyone wants to reach out to me and and you know maybe more exact times, I say exact because. Let's be clear, I, I, I can't give you totally exact times, but, you know, people have reached out to run 1K, 5K, 10K with me, which, again, is is really is really nice and really special. And um, not having to talk to myself along the route would also be great. So I would encourage anyone to, to come out. I'm not breaking any land speed records, by the way. I'm, I'm probably targeting around the 5.45, 5.50 per K pace so i'm taking it nice and easy everything is trying to keep around the one kind of 130 under 140 heart rate so that's mm. again that's kind of what i've trained for so that you know i, I kind of i'm able to last 300 300 k's so you know anyone can come alongside and and run with me so that'd be that'd be brilliant as well and we'll be tracking through the week and obviously trying to share all the great work you're doing to keep people informed. For those who are in the area, we do encourage you, but go enjoy, talk, 
Uh, try and find uh, the great David on his 300 kilometers and make that your challenge for the day if you are in the area. If you are driving on the Wexford roads, keep an eye out for him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what you're doing is absolutely amazing. And, and beyond that, the challenge is so big that it scares you. It definitely scares myself and Sean. Mm. And I've no doubt that everyone listening is, is very appreciative of what you're doing, not only just for running for your dad, but for charity, but for raising awareness of what running can do and, and the benefits of of running and, and that running community and, and community as well in Ireland. It's it's absolutely brilliant to see what you're doing. And and we are so happy to have you on the podcast and support. Thanks and we really hope everyone else who's listening and, and our thousands of listeners really get behind you and keep track and, and wish you all the best for the week ahead. Thanks a million, lads. Really appreciate the support. No worries. The best look. Actually, just one last thing. David is doing this probably right now as you're listening because it does start on November 4th, which is the Monday this episode goes out so once again best luck David and that's it for this week's episode of the Any Given Day podcast myself David and Eric take care